hello everyone welcome back to the channel in today's video we are going to talk about how we can enrich our power apps user experience and take it to the next level using creator kit so we are going to talk about creator kit how you can install creator kit and what components and controls we can leverage to enhance our user experience for power apps so what is creator kit so creator kit is a simply a collection of pcf pcf is nothing but power apps component framework which enables us to build out custom components or custom code components and can bundle up them in a solution which can be deployed into an environment to make it uh, more complex or to suffice some needs which cannot be leveraged or done with the default functionalities so the creator kit is nothing but a solution which have multiple already built components and controls uh, using PCF and uh, this provides a much cleaner and uh, structured or I would say familiar look uh, for our power apps which we are already seeing with SharePoint with Microsoft 360 other components for example this demo app I have opened so right now you can see there is a navigation over here and this is a list which is generally this resembles to our SharePoint list and when I click on it it opens a overlay panel just fading the behind the background scene and then giving this uh, overlay panel look and feel and showing the data like this and if I close it it should open up and get to the main list again so this sort of clean look we can provide with the creator kit so now let's start with installing the creator kit so to install creator kit you have to go to visit this uh, learn.microsoft.com where we have the link for download the creator kit and you can download this file it's a zip file and once this is downloaded then we can go to our makes.powerapps.com i'll just open it we have to go to admin so that we can first of all enable the power apps component framework for our environment so i'll just click on this gear icon go to admin center and from environments i'll select my environment where i wish to enable this so this is my environment and once i click on it I will be going to settings, then products, features, then I'll scroll down to bottom right. So this is Power Apps Component Framework for Canvas app. We have to enable this, allow if it's disabled for your environment. So mine is already enabled, we are good. So once it's done, you can click on save so that the changes can be reflected for your environment and close this. So once you enable it, you have to go to your uh, make uh, make.powerapps.com this environment go to solution so that we can import the zip file which we got which we downloaded from this link and for that we will just click on import solution go to browse pick the downloaded file click on next and it may take two three minutes to get all these components or solution installed in your environment so by the time you will be seeing currently importing solution so once the solution is added you will start seeing it creator kit 33 seconds ago and publisher is powercat so now we are done so we can go back to our home and start creating app so i'll just say create app blank app i'll just use the blank canvas app and name this as a let's say demo app so now i have it so to add start adding the component we have to click on this plus and over here at the bottom left you will see get more components so once you click there you will start getting the creator kit component library and you will have all these controls so i'll add everything so that we can actually would be seeing all these controls and as well as i will click on this code so there are multiple if i scroll down you will see there are multiple other controls over there fluent tag list search box spinner pivot text area and uh, detail list so i am going to add this one as well because in demo i have shown you that this is my detail list so i will be talking about couple of controls in today's session and these detail list and hover panel this we are going to cover in a subsequent one because we have to do multiple settings to have it i'll also try to show you like in a editable fashion like if i wish to update the data here and itself then i after updating i'll click on ok it should be saved back to sharepoint 
so that's we are going to do so I'll just add this fluent detail list as well as part of our control and we are good I'll just say import so we got this selected components were successfully imported now I can just search for my component expand menu this is the menu component and I'll search for header also so this is a header component where we would be just writing the our application heading and make a control for navigation so let's start adding this header control over our screen so right now it added this header control and if you look at it it's saying application name and there are left and right buttons to it and if I go to properties you will find there I have this text which I can actually rename this to this one and back button visible so if you are on a different screen and you wish to have your back button so if I just turn it on you will see that once I enabled it it started showing that back and it will redirect to the previous screen so for home screen you can turn it off but for the later one we may want to use it and the left button image so if I click on this left button image you can see I have this SVG so I'll just expand it so that we can look at it the data image and the SVG so you can have your images in SVG or directly as an image and bind it, it uh, with this control you can change it with your icon so for example for my this application if I just close it and go to this header left navigation then you will see I have binded this to my home image and it's a font, font awesome SVG which I have binded with so you can very well change for your app and if I go back over there you can again select this you can look at the other properties so right button image you can change it and on left button select so these are important like if you wish to do any additional operation when uh, left when the left button is clicked you can enable it and over here in the properties pane you can write your formula whatever you wish to do on button select if you wish to navigate somewhere or you wish to uh, update the context any context variable then you can do that using this property we have this right button select which is with just the same operation as we want to have for our this uh, app and when I click on plus to use the expand menu so if I'll just click plus and use expand menu then it will add the menu to our application and I can just pull it down and I'll just run it so right now if I click on this expand it expanded my options and whatever default options are there like it is showing and it's reading from a list if you select your control go to this advanced properties you would see that there is a items there is a table which is binded up you select it we will see like what table we this control is binded to and I just drag it so it's saying icon icon this is a office fabric icon so you can change it for example for home you can just write home it will immediately reflect so you can use this office fabric UI icon library just to have your desired icons to be placed there if you wish to for power bi let's say what different options i am having so i'll just choose this one if i run it it will show me the updated icons this is how you can update and in this items is a table which we are binded to in the tool tip whatever on the hover what text should be shown it should be shown there so this is how you can bind your this navigation expanded navigation and is navigation enabled you have you can keep it like on the on the button click it uh, if it should do some operation then you can enable it and default expanded value so if you enable it then it will by default it will be in the expanded mode if you disable it will be in the collapse mode and you can enable once you click on this and if you wish to do some select operations for example I wish to navigate to some other screen on click of some button then I should able to do for example for this my app if I am clicking on power bi I should be navigated to power bi page if I click on this power apps I should be navigated to power apps page for this 
you need you need to just set your buttons for your expanded menu so on button select you have to go and just write a formula there like what operation it should do so on expand menu five selected items label is power apps then navigate to screen two so this set same sort of formula you can use for our this on button select and we can place this over there instead of five we are having expanded menu as one and we'll just add the screen two because screen two is not available for us and screen three as well so i'll just save it and add the other screens so we'll just add screen two and screen three so that the navigation should work i'll go back just say and run this one so over here if i click on this because these are blank screens so you can put your same navigation your header controls into this screen too you can copy this control and paste it in other screens along with the header of course and i'll just minimize this copy the header paste the header as well and in this header we'll just enable that back button so that we can navigate back to our previous screen so back button is enabled quickly and i'll do i'll copy the same two controls so i'll just make a copy and paste that into our screen three as well and on back settle select we haven't set any navigation so we can just go to this on back select we'll just navigate to our home screen that is screen one and both the back selects we'll just add this i'll just go to the header of my this screen two and we'll find the back select and just save it so right now we have done we have played with header we have played with navigation and the next part is i'll just go to screen one and there i am going to add the detail list and for that i'll be just clicking on plus and file my detail fluent list so i'll just add this to my screen one and as soon as it adds it asks us for this connector so we have to have this uh, sharepoint connector in place so that i can tie up with the sharepoint list so for that i'll just go to this data source add sharepoint site as data connector and we'll pick one of my sharepoint site with one of my list and i'll just search for this my list approval demo and right now if you see like though like i have selected the uh, the data source for my this detail list but still nothing is being shown if i set that to approval list as well still is binded but nothing is being shown over here and the reason is because we have to set the column items for it and for setting column items we have to create one table with the same name as the columns so that it can start showing up so for this video i'll just connect or create the column table so that the data can be uh, shown over here but in the next video on click or select of this item i would open the hover panel and make that interactive or the crowd operations the data should be viewed data should be saved back so i'll just bind or go to my this properties for the column items so there is column items and we have to create a table of columns with the property name if you go to the creator kit you will find in the creator kit we have this reference for all these controls and if you go to items details list you will get the table structure of columns how the column should look like so our table should be having this data with these uh, records so that it can be binded so i'll just copy the table structure from this one and i'll just copy only two items just to show or let's say three items just to show three columns and we'll go back to our column table and we'll close this table so right now this table if i just format it you will see only three columns are there but the columns has to be binded with that so column name title 
I'll open my SharePoint list as well so that I can see what columns I am having into my SharePoint list. So first is title, second is project, third is responses. So I'll just go back, say title, project, and the display name, I can say name. And over here in project, I can say same display name as project. And for the third column, I'll just choose as responses. And have this responses as display name also. So all these property column above false is bold true, column width or it should be extendable. There are many properties. If you go to this properties of this table list, then you will find a lot of uh, cell properties are there which we can include. For example, column resizable, column select, if it's a link type, it should be, column cell type should be link. So now we have started getting the data into our detail list. So we have connected the data, we have connected the column items. Now as part of selection settings, so what should happen as a selection type, if you see in the right hand side, we have select type property is single. So the row should be focus, select row. And once it's selected, it should highlight like which row it should be we are selecting. So this property, this sort of certain properties we have configured for this video. But in next video, I am going to extend this part where like if I am clicking on this item or the row, I should get an overlay panel that should be viewable. And once updated, but then once the data is updated, it should write back to SharePoint. So that's end to end thing we are going to see in next video. Just say stay tuned for that video and if you like the video do press thumb icon and if you have any questions please feel free to drop your comments. I'll try to answer. Thank you. That's it for today.